to another episode of expat life where we basically travel all around the world i have no clue where we end up every week we've been to uh, iceland we've been to the canarian island we've been to france so far now we're going not too far away from texas mexico and i welcome angelique kapoor to is that how you say your name yes kapoor? yes welcome to the show thank you so much i'm so excited to be here and so uh, we talked a little bit before here, before I press record, and I called you an expat expert, I guess. Um, you're traveling all around the world for all different reasons, and I love it. And now you are in Mexico. How right. many days have you been in Mexico or weeks? Or I've, been, I've been literally here probably uh, a little over a week. So, yeah, we uh, flew in from Bali, Indonesia into Mexico City. Um, and then spent two or three days there and uh, in an area called Polanco. And then uh, we just arrived here into San Miguel de Allende uh, about three days ago. So, yeah. And how long time were you in Indonesia before that? We were there for a year and a half. So at least you, you knew your address. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so how many countries in total do you think you've lived in? Or visited? Uh -huh. Probably, I mean, I would say close to a dozen, though maybe not quite a dozen. Yeah, we've been to uh, Costa Rica, Japan, India. I've been to India a lot because my husband's from India, so we go back um, quite, quite, quite often. Um, also, we went to while we were in uh, the Asian area. We also went to Malaysia, um, as well as Vietnam. Um, the Philippines. Uh, gosh, where else have we been? So where where do you, where is home? So yeah, so I mean, home. I see quotes. Home is uh, Seattle, Washington, in the states. Um, that's where we have a house, and we've been renting it for a few years. But um, yeah, I mean, home is really wherever we are with our luggage. You know, everything that we own is in six pieces of luggage that we travel around with and you know people always find that odd when they see us you know traveling around but but yeah I mean, literally before we started traveling we you know um just kind of you know i mean we we wanted to do this for a really long time and before we we did we kind of made like all these excuses the excuses of oh you know i don't know if they're gonna have good health care we're because I have chronic migraines and autoimmune arthritis and my husband has, um, you know, diabetes and um, hypertension. And um, so that was an excuse we always use. The other excuse was, um, you know, what if, you know, they don't have facilities that I like or, you know, I don't want to be too far away from family, you know, things like that. But then it, we just got to the points where we're like, you know what? No more excuses. There's there's no, no point in making all these excuses. We've been blessed with being able to have time and location freedom. And, you know, we can't take that, um, you know, lightly that we really need to utilize that to, to travel the world, which is really what we want to do. We just need to overcome the fears that we have and just do it. So we, um, you know, within a very short period of time, like three months, we, um, you know, uh, sold everything in our house. Um, yeah, and then packed everything into as much, you know, kind of minimized um, as much as we could into six pieces of luggage and then rented our house and jumped on a plane on a one-way ticket and, yeah, found ourselves traveling all over this place. So, yeah. What was the first destination? Um, our first destination, we actually went to Hawaii, which I know isn't very far from, from the States. But, um, yeah, we went to Hawaii first um, and then we went to Costa Rica. Um that. And then after that, things kind of get blurry. So, <laughs> yeah. Somewhere we went somewhere. We're still alive, so it's all good. <laughs> and now, now you're ended up in Mexico, as at least as for right now. Do you know how long time you're going to stay in Mexico? 
I'm I'm thinking we kind of, you know, kind of feel it out um, in regards to when we decide to go to a different country, we kind of feel out, you know, why we want to go to the new country where we feel like we're being called to. And then once we get here, um, you know, within the first few weeks, we can kind of get a feel of, yeah, you know, I, I feel like we could we want to be here for six months or a year. And so, yeah, I mean, we're kind of both on the same page that we feel like we want to be here for at least a year maybe a little bit longer. So yeah, when we went to um, Bali, Indonesia, where we were prior, we thought we would be there two years. We only ended up being there a year and a half. So yeah, it just really kind of depends. And how do you solve living a situation? Are you living at hotels or do you rent an apartment or a house? Or do you figure that out when you get there? Yeah, Ooh. so initially we start in hotels. Um, and then we, you know, when we kind of decide what area we kind of feel like we want to settle in for a little bit more long term, then we start, you know, contacting uh, local realtors right. and, um, you know, looking at uh, places that are available for rent. Um, and then, you know, look at the places, find one that, uh, you know, we feel good about. And then, um, you know, rent that for we usually rent them like three months at a time. Because um, again, we never know, we we'll know if we're going to wake up and be like, you know what, we want to go somewhere else. So, so yeah. <laughs> Today's the day to get a ticket to somewhere else. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. That is kind of cool to just have that opportunity to just go with the flow. Yeah. Can I say that way? Just like, uh, and your husband is a travel agent, correct? He is. He's not a travel agent, but what he does is he works with um, groups, uh, like sports groups, especially exchange student groups. He's had um, his clients for a really long time, like 10 to 15 years um, for some of them. And so, yeah, yeah. He, he works with uh, these groups um, who typically, you know, kind of on an annual basis tend to go to the same places. Um, so that's why we we know that you know we're gonna take a trip to Japan. We're gonna go to Costa Rica. Um, we just started. He just started a tour to India last year, um, and then looking to start one in Bali since we you know we've been there for a while. So we we know people and can get one started. So yeah, right. All these connections that you have already established while being there or living there for a longer time or a some time must benefit his business and exactly you do because you must do something as well that you can do re on, remotely basically Exactly. Yeah. So I actually come from a background of being in the healthcare industry for over 20 years. Um, I got out of um, healthcare back in 2019. Um, but that is, you know, and I spent about 10 years in management and leadership positions in healthcare. And um, it was, you know, 2019 where I just I decided to pivot, you know, there were parts about my job that I loved and parts that I didn't like so much. And I really felt like, um, you know, proper leadership development was something that needed to be addressed because it was seriously a gap that I experienced personally as well as watched others, you know, go through the same struggle and things like that. So um, I decided to, you know, really do um, what I was really passionate about at the time um, as part of a function of my job uh, back then. And that was really coaching and mentoring um, other people, you know, people on my team and different leaders and things like that. So I um, decided to go into coaching, uh, leadership coaching specifically. I went to school for life coaching for a year and then opened up my own business um, in 2019 and been doing that ever since. So yeah, um, definitely just been, been blessed to be able to have, um, you know, something that I can do pretty much from anywhere around the world. And, um, you know, like I was telling you before we hopped on um, live is, you know, um, I've really found, you know, going around the world and getting experience with the different cultures and seeing things from different perspectives and um, it really does you know improve and heighten your leadership skill so i actually encourage you know if if um you know aspiring leaders or leaders can do it you know travel as much as possible because it's to your benefit absolutely because i i come across that a lot with being a swedish person even though sweden has a lot of international relationships and, and traditions people ask me so many questions that was also one of the reasons why we why i started the podcast people are so interested in different cultures there are things that we do and it can be simple things every swede takes off it's the shoes when you walk into indoors placement not if you walk into a business but in somebody's house because you right. know 
put in all the dirt and, and mud and everything that's outside. And that was something when I came here to Texas, people don't do that. And I did that. And people looked at me like, why did you take off your shoes? So I was like, mm -hmm. <laughs> because that's what I'm used to do. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Just that kind of a simple thing to learn about other cultures just helps you out. Right. In yeah. You do it. You don't have to really be a leader, but just opens your mind. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. And that's actually the, the approach that I take to what I do as a leadership coach. I actually call myself a conscious leadership coach. And, you know, really what I found in my own experience and my own journey, and then helping the people that I've worked with as clients is that, you know, at first I started working with people on their leadership skill development in the workplace. But then, you know, I really started to find that they, you know, wanted to um, be able to have a better work life balance. And, you know, that's an aspect of leadership as well. So um, during the time that I've been doing this as a leadership coach, I really found that leadership is actually applicable to all aspects of life. It's not just in the workplace or professionally in business, you know, um, at the bare minimum. I mean, being a leader to yourself and in your own life, that's definitely a must. And then you I think that is something that everybody should do. So then, you know, if you look at it that way, then we are all capable and all meant to be leaders. And it's, I love, I absolutely love what you just said. And we're coming a little bit into here what the other podcast is doing, but, but I'm, I'm doing it anyway. I don't care. It's my, both of them. Um, <laughs> you're a leader over your own life, you said, mm -hmm. and that is so true. And that also applies to your own decision to say, heck, we're going to go wherever the life is taking us. Exactly. Today is Mexico. Tomorrow it might be somewhere else. Mm -hmm. Just be that leader of your life. This is what I want to do. Let's go for it. Let's make it happen. Exactly. Exactly. I mean, I think, you know, there's so many people who kind of just sit in their comfort zone and they're always complaining about the things that they want to do or the things that they want to have. But it's like, you know, every time somebody talks to me about, oh, my gosh, I, your life is my dream life. I want to do that, too. And I always ask, well, why can't you? You know, all it took was for me, for me and my husband to make a decision to just like I was telling you, stop making the excuses that we were making and say, you know what? No more excuses. If this is what we want to do, we're going all in and we're taking action. No more sitting back and saying, oh, God, that person has this amazing life. I want to have that, too. You can. But you have to make that decision. So, yeah, I mean, it's, I, to me, it's incredible how, um, you know, so many people kind of sit back and they're observing other people's life and saying, oh, I wish I had their life. How come I can't do that or be like that? But you can. Yeah. And again, that all goes back to you being a leader of yourself and in your own life and saying, you know what, you're not going to let life and circumstances and other people dictate who you are or how you live your life. You are going to make the decision to be who it is that you are truly meant to be and live the life that you truly desire to live and a life that you love and stop sitting there and complaining. <laughs> right. And yeah. if you want to move to another country, make it happen. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, again, you know, I was telling you, me and my husband are blessed to have time and location freedom, but we're not rich by any means. And people always think, oh, you must make all this money to be able to travel around like you do. But we don't, you know, we actually, you know, we make a, a mid income. Um, but the thing is, is that we are able to manage our funds wisely. And then also being in, you know, different countries, the cost of living is so much in some of these countries. So, you know, you could you could be living or making a, a middle class income and be living a life of luxury somewhere else. So it's just, you have to change your perspective and the way that you look at things. Absolutely. I, I just love it. There was so much for me to just <laughs> so that conversation because I literally had somebody last week saying to me, and, and I'm not, I don't consider myself being anything special more than a hardworking weirdo, to be honest, because um, I do a lot of things. Mm -hmm. And they said, oh, she's just such a go-getter and I want to have her life. I was like, there's nothing specific with my life to have. What I have, you can have as well. It's just about your choices. Exactly. I choose 
to move from Sweden to Texas and build my life here. Mm -hmm. uh, I choose to have several projects going and I may decide I will choose to move somewhere else in the world tomorrow. Right. It's all about what I want to happen right now. I am content. My life is in Texas and I do all these projects, but who knows what's going to happen tomorrow. Right. Right. Yeah. So in all these countries you've been, which one do you love the most? Oh, gosh. Some people ask me that all the time, and I can never come up with an answer. I mean, there are, yeah, I mean, every country, you know, um, has its, um, something special about it that you that you absolutely love. I mean, um, you know, Bali, Indonesia, where we just came from, one of the things that kept us there for a year and a half um, is the people. The people there are amazing. They are the most friendly, most positive um, people we've ever met. Um, and they really, you know, welcome you as part of the family, you know. And what actually one of the things when we left, we had the local people that we connected with, like the lady who cleaned our house, the people who did our laundry, the people who lived down the street from us. And um, they actually, you know, were texting and asking us, hey, did you get home okay? And stuff like that. And that doesn't usually happen. So, yeah, I mean, you know, they are some of the most um, amazing, friendly people. They open up their homes and their hearts to you and they really bring you into their family and yeah i mean they they stay connected with you i mean when me and you know the the housekeeper were saying goodbye we started crying you know because we had developed this connection so yeah yeah i mean that's um you know uh, definitely one of the things about bali that made it so special but like i said um every country um there's something special and amazing about it and that's why i love traveling and you know seeing different places and and finding that special something about them um, you know, I mean, here in Mexico, we've only been here a few days, but here where we are, I'm San Miguel de Allende. It's a beautiful historical town. And again, the people here are just very chill and mellow. You know, it's um, not the hustle culture and, and stuff like that. It's just, you know, they're here enjoying um, their town and you know, enjoy, enjoying and living their lives. So yeah, it, yeah, hard, hard, hard question to answer because every place is, you know, there's something amazing about everywhere. So. How do you keep traditions going? Do you take the traditions to where you're coming and embrace them and try to come with a community? Or do you keep your own? Your husband is from India, correct? Mm -hmm. Do you have any traditions? Do you have any? Uh, how about Thanksgiving stuff, American stuff like that? Do you keep them going or how, how do you do Yeah, that? yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, Thanksgiving is my favorite holiday. And then, of course, you know, I love Christmas as well. Um, We try and go home um, to my parents who actually live in Texas as well. They're in Dallas. Oh. Yeah. I actually um I actually grew up in Austin, Texas when I was a kid. There you go. There yeah. you go. Very very familiar with Texas. But yeah, we try and go home um for the holidays as often as we can. But yeah, I mean when we go to different countries, I uh, definitely try and um keep our own um, traditions that are really close to our hearts going. Um, you know, my husband has his um, Hindu holidays that he celebrates, Diwali, um, you know, and, and different um, other ones like that. And then, of course, you know, um, Easter, um, Thanksgiving, and Christmas are important to me. And then, of course, um, you know, really seeing, that's something that uh, that's, uh, you know, astounding as well, being in other countries, is seeing that they're um, you know, uh, holidays and traditions are, I um, mean, experiencing it from, you know, a different side. I mean, um, you know, some countries have uh, kind of the same holidays, but they celebrate them kind of different. Um, they call them something different. Um, you know, like for me, my husband in India, Diwali is very similar to Christmas. Um, so, you know, that's, you know, an experience of how, um, you know, I was able to experience that being in India yeah. during holidays um and then bali indonesia had some um you know traditions that are very similar to our different holidays as well and then here um, you know in mexico we're really excited people are already talking to us about the day of the dead which is in conjunction with halloween so we're we're excited to see um you know the different tra traditions that they that they have here and the different holidays that they celebrate but yeah we kind of to answer the question we kind of like mold um, our own holidays and then learning about the country that we're in their holidays and their traditions. And like I said, super eye opening to see how people in different countries do things and how they celebrate and why they celebrate. So yeah, it's pretty amazing. I bet. And while we're talking about traditions, I don't know where that came to my mind, but how do you do with visa and 
ability to stay when you don't know how long time you're going to stay. Yeah, so that's kind of my husband's department. <laughs> Again, being in the tour and travel um, industry, he just always knows. Like when we're about, we're talking about going to a new country, he's like, oh, yeah, you can, you know, they have a, a visa on arrival and you can stay there for six months or whatever. But he just knows all of this. And um, so, yeah, I mean, it really just depends. Again, it kind of starts with the feeling of, Okay, we're we feel like we're being called to this country and we kind of have a feeling that we want to be there for this amount of time. So if we need to get like a long term visa, like in Bali, we got a two year visa before we went there. And again, we stayed there a year and a half, so we didn't uh, stay the entire visa. But we kind of go in and kind of having a bit of an idea of how long we want to stay and then we'll get um, the visa according to that. I mean, then of course, if we extend, then we extend. So yeah, that's how that's how we kind of do things. I don't know how other traveling nomads do it, but yeah. It's so different, and as you say, different countries require different things and exactly. different processes. So, it, but having your husband in the in travel industry must help a lot. Just he's up to date in all the rules, and I'm like, oh yeah, that's right. He was in the travel exactly industry. like. And, you know, he knew exactly like what countries were more strict in regards to, you know, having the vaccine and the boosters um, and which countries, you know, weren't. So, yeah, he he's he's definitely a helpful resource. <laughs> <laughs> you did a good choice on that one. <laughs> when did you leave on your first trip? Was that before COVID? Um, no, it was after COVID. Was it after was COVID? it was a little bit after. Yeah, that's when we were dealing with the different pandemic stuff. And yeah. and again, being in the different countries during that time, it was interesting to see. Um, like in India, because that country is so packed, um, there there is no concept of private space, personal space. So you know, to kind of be exposed to that, and then you know, go to a country where, um, like Indonesia, kind of same thing. I mean, they're not exact, but they're there. Uh, they don't, they weren't really into wearing masks all the time. Um, but then, you know, you kind of go to a country where they are wearing masks all the time. And then, yeah, it was definitely um, seeing things from different perspectives. And again, that kind of had that cultural connection of, you know, whether or not they really felt like they were safe or they needed to wear masks and stuff like that. So, like, yeah, because still today if you have a covid wave somewhere uh, people get a little bit hysterical with it I guess. Yeah. Yeah. yeah anxious yeah yeah anxious is a, is a good way of, of saying it. <laughs> it's like almost you see somebody with a mask and you almost assume that person is sick right right while before yeah it was mandatory you had to have a mask and you didn't even think about it further down the road but today it's been a little bit more hmm, you have a mask you're sick we're we're back to that again um but how did you feel did you feel comfortable traveling during this time at all i i did i did personally um i was i mean i'm i'm kind of you know really careful about uh always sanitizing and washing my hands and stuff like that and um you know taking zycam if i start to feel you know a cough or sore throat anything like that um so yeah i mean um, we were comfortable traveling um and again it was actually again I'm kind of seeing things from different perspectives like when i would talk to my mom because i talked to her regularly she'd tell me oh yeah a COVID, like you're saying, a COVID wave coming and, you know, they're talking about um, re, um, you know, regulating the mask mandates and stuff like that. And then, you know, while we were in um, Indonesia or India, you know, there would be like a cold going around. And a couple of times I was actually like, oh, I think this is actually COVID. But again, people weren't making a big deal out of it. They were just treating it like, oh, I need to take some medicine, a rest for a couple of days, and then I'm good to go. Um, but yeah, there wasn't any type of panic or anxiety about, oh, gosh, we have to start wearing masks again yeah. or stay away from me, you know, um, or I have to go to the hospital, anything like that. So yeah, just seeing things from those different uh, kind of perspectives and mindsets was kind of interesting. You, you saw it that people like, like reading about Europe, for example, they were right. crazy. Yeah. Like my friends over in Sweden, still they go and vaccinate. I haven't had a shot for I don't know how many years. Uh, and they are on shot five, six, seven, eight, 
12. I don't right. know how many. And they're literally running to the doctor to get that stab in the arm. And I'm like, why are we still doing this? Right, right. And, and it's kind of interesting to hear how other people are just uh, seeing the world from different perspectives during that time because it was so different. It was unexpected and just different. Exactly. And then I, I think it also boils down to um, like the culture and how healthy people are, you know, like in um, Indonesia, very healthy eating, um, you know, very well rounded, balanced meals. Um, India, not so much. And, you know, my husband knows this. I complain about it all the time whenever we go to India. It's very high fat, high carb, um, you know, um, diet, um, which I don't, uh, you know, particularly like, which is why I don't like to spend a lot of time there. But um, yeah, I mean, kind of seeing the different um, you know, kind of traditional diets that the different countries have, and then seeing how that plays out in regards to how healthy people are. Um, so that's, um, you know, seeing things from that type of aspect too, especially um, during the time with, with COVID and seeing that. And, and when you say food and healthy, what does people in India eat when you say carbs and a lot of of fat and unhealthy food. Yeah, yeah. so it's, it's a lot of um um you know I don't know like roti. So it's kind of like uh, tortillas, um but you know Indian style tortillas. They also eat a lot of lentil, uh, a lot of potatoes. They eat a lot of vegetables, but they saute it to death to where the nutrition kind of you know gets 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 cooked out of it. Um, and yeah, I mean salad. I like I love salad. I eat salad every meal. And when you eat for a salad in India, it it says green salad, but it actually comes with a, a big plate of onions and tomato. And I'm always like, where's the green? What is this? This is red and white. <laughs> you all colorblind here? Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, that's, you know, for me, again, I, you know, love fruits and vegetables. And, and whenever we go to India, that's something that's that typically me missing from my diet for however long we're there. So, yeah. Um, and then, like I said, we were in Indonesia. It was a much more balanced diet where, you know, they did have their protein um, and then their vegetables or a salad. Um, and then they would have like French fries or potatoes and stuff like that. But yeah, that was to me, that was more balanced. And I enjoyed that more than, you know, when I go to India and I feel like I'm missing a whole food group. <laughs> Sorry, India. I know. I, I, like I said, I complain about it all the time, so my husband knows. But yeah. So, where in the world have you had the best food? Oh my gosh! So my yeah. I uh, my favorite foods are Mediterranean and Mexican. So, which is one of the reasons why I wanted to come to Mexico next, because in Indonesia we couldn't find Mexican food anywhere, and so for a year and a half I was like, ugh. Really? <laughs> but yeah, now in Mexico, I get all of the enchiladas and tacos I want. And so I'm, I'm, a, you know, a happy little clam. Um, but yeah, I mean, again, it just kind of depends um, when you look at, uh, you know, the culture and, and the different food choices here. Like here in Mexico, we're finding, um, like you do kind of have more of a, a balanced um, variety of foods that are available to you, although they do eat a lot of um, breads and and they love eggs. And I am actually allergic to eggs, so so that's kind. I know that's kind of a challenge. Um, but one of the things you know that Indonesia has that uh, they don't have here, uh, and we rarely find in other countries is um, Indonesia always had fresh juices, um, like avocado juice and mango juice um, and stuff like that. And you know that was I really found that that added to you know kind of. The healthy aspect of of living there. I like that. I've never yeah. heard of that. But then yeah. I, did, I lived a couple of months in Singapore, and and they had a lot of juices there as well. Yeah, I haven't thought about yeah. it. So yeah. It's not bottled. It's you know they you order it, they peel, go get the fruit, yeah. peel it. Yeah, yeah. It's it was amazing. I you know that that was the when we went to Indonesia. That was the first time that I experienced that, and I was like, oh my gosh, this is amazing. <laughs> have a juice presser. Like one of those. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I ended up having, you know, some sort of juice every every meal. And yeah, it was it was it was amazing. Yeah. That because juice makes you feel healthy. And yeah. Then, then I'm talking it, about it, it was fresh, it wasn't a bottle. They yeah. um right. you know, they so, didn't add extra stuff into it. So yeah. Yeah, it comes straight out of the orange or whatever you, you're making it out of, not exactly. that you buy in the store that has half of it is sugar. 
Exactly. Sugar and water. <laughs> Sugar and water. And then <laughs> this is what it's going to taste like. So we sell it like that. Exactly. Um, but but they really make it from scratch and you can feel the the orange pulps in there or whatever. Exactly. Mm -hmm. That makes it completely different and so much better. So, yes, exactly. <laughs> so what challenges have you experienced while you're moving around like this? Um, I definitely, definitely the transition, um, you know, of moving, especially when we decide to go to a new country and then we're spending some time in hotels before we find a place where we really want to, you know, settle for a longer term. And um, that's the hardest that I found is that, you know, when we are um, getting ready to leave a country, um, you know, just kind of anything that we've bought that we can't take, uh, you know, selling that or giving it away, things like that. Um, and then coming into a new country, um, not feeling that sense of stability, you know, that, that sense of um, being planted somewhere um, for, you know, a few weeks until you can actually do that. That's not, that's been the hardest part for me is, um, you know, that transition piece, um, in between going between countries, you know, every time we do it, I always, I'm always in this state where I'm like, okay, this is the last country we're going to. And I say this every time, you know, <laughs> my, my husband knows that I'm kind of at that breaking point where I'm like, you know, I, it, this is hard and, you know, packing and, and trudging all your stuff between airlines and trains and buses is hard. So I complain every time, but then we still keep moving around the country or, or, or you no know, moving around the world. So, yeah. <laughs> you have a couple of more countries to visit, even though you haven't made up your mind, what's on the bucket list? What do you want to see? What haven't you seen that you still want to see? Yeah. So on the bucket list is def definitely Portugal. Portugal. That was not yeah. the answer. Why? Yeah, yeah. What, um, I, I, you know, I don't know. It's just one of those places that I've always been like, oh, you know, that sounds and looks amazing. I want to see what that's like and experience that firsthand. So yeah, Portugal is definitely on the bucket list. Um, I actually was born in Germany, so I would actually like to go back, um, to Germany and then visit other parts of you know Europe and see what that's like. Between, you know, Austria. Um, Switzerland. So those are definitely on the list. The uh, Caribbean is definitely on my bucket list as well. So yeah. Nice. Are you, are you thinking about traveling or living at those places? Yeah, you, I mean, we, we, we do more travel and then live there for a little bit. You know, really the only places where we kind of travel to is back home to the U.S. where we only spend, you know, a few days to a few weeks at a time. So, so everywhere else that we go, you know, we have the intention of being there for, you know, at least a few months, if not um, a year or more, just depending on, you know, kind of the vibe and how we're feeling when we're in that country. Do you think you ever will put your feet down in one place and say, this is where we're going to stay? This is our view forever home or will you always be um yeah i mean you asked me that question now and so um i mean now i'm feeling like you know no you know we're kind of enjoying um you know being able to have the freedom to move around um but i mean you know you might ask me a few months from now or even next year that same question i'm like yeah we need to settle somewhere and be there for you know a while <laughs> so yeah I got to ask because you brought it up from the beginning, your medications and all that kind of stuff. How do you solve that? Do you have a U.S. doctor who prescribes you everything and you have a humongous pharmacy you travel around with <laughs> uh, that you have to go through customs with and try to explain why you have all this with you? How do you solve that? Because I believe you said he's a diabetic or you're a diabetic. That, that requires medications. Yeah, so my husband's diabetic and he has high, high blood pressure, hypertension, and then I have uh, chronic migraines um, that requires me to get Botox um, treatments every three months. Um, and then I also am on some, you know, oral medications for when I do get migraines. Um, and then I also have an autoimmune arthritis, which I used to take Imbro for, but it's actually interesting that you bring that up. Um, when the first time that we traveled out of the U.S., the first country that we were in, they were astonished at the amount of medication that we were on. 
<laughs> and they were like, but we see this all the time from people from Western countries, you know, the US, Australia, Canada, they always come with, you know, being on so many medications. Actually, when I was living in Bali, Indonesia, um, so to partially answer your question, I always find um, the doctors that I need in the new country. So I had a neurologist, you know, I had a GYN and I had a rheumatologist. And um, I actually was able to come off a majority of my medications um, being in Indonesia because and India, because in both of the countries, they were like, half of these things you don't even need to be on. Um, yeah. And then, you know, and then so. Um, and in fact, I used to, you know, go to acupuncture and get massage regularly. Um, and my acupuncturist, you know, um, in the States, you know, I would always go every couple of weeks, um, stuff like that. But my acupuncturist um, said he refused to treat me because he said, okay, so he treated me a handful of times. And then he said, I have done all that I can for you. The rest is up to you and your mindset and your daily habits. And then he refused to see me. Yeah. So the perspective in terms of healthcare and, you know, the lifestyle in different countries is so different. I mean, again, in the States, I was just getting put on all kinds of different medications. And then we went to these other countries and um, they were like astonished that you're on those medications. And then, like I said, my doctors were like, you don't need to be on these. So they would take me off and I feel completely fine. In fact, I no longer take my embryo. Um, I'm, I've been taken off of three other prescription medications that I was on for long term um, and feel completely fine. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I think that speaks to kind of our mentality in the U.S. about healthcare and medicine that, you know, we always solve um, our healthcare problem with a pill. But it's like that's only masking the symptoms of the root cause of what's actually going on. And like in Asia, you know, the Eastern cultures, they really believe that your illnesses um, are really, are, you know, are really grounded in something that's happening within your body, whether that be in your mind or emotionally. Um, so yeah, I mean, kind of seeing things from that perspective and being like, oh, wow, you know, I don't need to be on 20 medications. I just need to figure out what's going on within myself and correct that. So yeah, to me, that was so interesting. Um, and one of the things that was, you know, really transformational and healing, um, being in those different countries, really seeing that from that perspective, instead of being on drugs all the time, and depending on them to, you know, feel somewhat normal with my conditions. Right. And yeah, that is so interesting, because I bet that if an American doctor watches this, they will probably say, well, Pills is the answer of everything. You can't just do the healing thing, whatever. It's got to be a balance. Exactly. Like you have a problem. Let's say diabetes, for example. Not all of diabetes can be changed by changing lifestyle, but mm -hmm. some of it. You can right. reduce your medication with getting yourself a better lifestyle. Right. Exactly. Eating better, exercising. Yeah, my husband was at, actually able to, um, he's taking a quarter of the amount of metformin that he was taking uh, when we left the States. And again, just being exposed to a different way of living and a different diet. Um, so yeah, it, yeah, to me, it's really interesting. I mean, you know, I'm not going to hop on a soapbox and talk about um, the healthcare and industry in the US and stuff like that, because I could go on for hours. But yeah, I'm not, I really think there's some form of conditioning and manipulation going on there that, again, I advocate people be leaders of themselves and in their own lives. And again, really start to question, um, you know, you know, your doctor is only treating the symptoms. What about what about the root cause? You know, why why do you have this condition? When did it start? And instead of um, looking at your life and being like, I want to be on this medication every day for the rest of my life, you know, question that and say, but why? You know, why can't I just fix what happened and go back to finding that alignment to where before I didn't have it? You know. Okay, yeah. Yeah, it's like me. I removed my thyroid because uh, I have hypothyroidism back in Sweden, and there they removed it. Like mm -hmm. that's, that's the standard treatment. That's it, and that's over. Right. So if I don't take my levothyroxine every day for the rest of my life, it's going to be a mess. I know right. that's kind of a medication you need to have. So it's not that you should 
get off all your medications and, and get change your lifestyle. But it's all about, do I really need that because I have something removed in my body or is it workable with a lifestyle change together? Exactly. And then yeah. as in your husband's case can reduce the medication in, in that way, you can also explore more. What do you do if you get sick somewhere? Uh, do you have a plan if something would happen when you move countries, do you do the research? Oh, if we get sick, this is where we go. Yeah, yeah. Actually, we're really intentional about um, being in areas where we're close to hospitals, um, yeah. specifically hospitals. You know, they um, speak English really well. Um, you know, they're exposed to treating, uh, you know, other expats and foreigners and things like that. So, so knowing, no. that, you know, yeah. we are able to get uh, proper medical care if we need it. Um, and then again, um, we're really intentional about as soon as we get into a new country, really finding those specialists um, that we need for our specific conditions um, so that we start to build that relationship. Um, and like I said, you know, I have to get Botox every three months. Um, and, you know, before I used to have to be on Embril and have to talk to a rheumatologist all the time. But since I was taken off of that and told that my arthritis is actually in remission, and I don't need to be on those medications, you know, that's, that's a plus as well. But yeah, definitely something that, you know, if you decide to have this type of lifestyle, you need to consider. And it was actually one of the things, one of the excuses that we were using as to why we weren't doing it, you know, what's healthcare going to be like in different countries? Am I going to be able to get my medications when I'm on it? We found that, um, you know, healthcare in some countries is actually better than they are in the U.S. and I know I have to say that quietly, but um, <laughs> yeah, like in, in Indonesia, the, the healthcare was actually better um, than what we experienced in the U.S. Um, and again, the the healthcare costs are um, you know half of the cost, if not you know more than that. And um, and then yeah, the medications. Um, you know, we have not been, been anywhere where we haven't found um, at least a comparable version to the medications that we take in different countries. So, yeah, I mean, I would say to people who are kind of using that excuse too, um, is do your research, but don't be scared. Um, you know, in the U.S., we are not the only people that suffer from those same conditions. You know, other people, I'm telling you, other people in other countries have migraines too. You know, other people have um, autoimmune arthritis and diabetes and hypertension. It's not just localized to your country. Um, um, to your so, town. Exactly. Yeah. So again, looking at things from a different perspective, you're not, your country is not the only one that has those types of conditions. Other countries have it too. So they must have a way to treat them, right? So right. yeah. It's so yeah. Finding it. And, and exactly. Okay. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And, and what else do you think that people, why do people hesitate of actually being brave? What, what do you say to people that comes up with this closet of, of uh, excuses, excuses. doing it? And it's like, really, what do you say to those people? You only live once, live it rightfully. Yeah, I know. Exactly. I mean, I think yeah. the biggest thing, the biggest hurdle that um, people have to overcome is, you know, that fear of the unknown. Um, that is always the one thing that tends to, you know, keep us kind of trapped in our comfort zone is like, we don't know, you know, if I take this, this step to get out of my comfort zone, what's going to happen? You know, you never know. And so, you know, part of what I do with my clients coaching is that they always go to, oh my gosh, if I do this, this is going to happen. And they kind of go down this rabbit hole, but I'm kind of like, okay, well, let's go there. So what if the worst thing that you can think of actually happened? What would you do? And then they're always able, yeah, they're always able to come up with a plan. And I'm like, well, there you go. If the worst thing that could ever possibly happen in that situation happens, you just wrote off a whole complete plan for me. So there's you you have no more excuses, you know. So that's kind of my thing is that um it yeah, that seems to be the biggest fear of people is the fear of them now. Again, my my huge things were um, you know, healthcare, medication, what if you know the bathrooms aren't the same, you know, stuff like that. But it's kind of like, you know, what what if, you know, what if they don't have my medication or or don't have the healthcare? Well, you know, I can come back or I can, you know, go with the treatment that they utilize. And and that's what I did. And I found that again, it, it's actually better, you know. Um 
it worked out better for me. But yeah, um, you know, just kind of looking at things from a different perspective and asking, well, you know, what if your worst um, fear happened? What are you going to do? And then you can take that off the table. <laughs> that was just destroyed. So sorry. <laughs> What do you mean? Is there anything now you're moving around the world regularly? I can say, um, is there anything with the US that you miss that you said, hmm, I wish I had this food wise tradition? -wise? Yeah, I mean, yeah, there are de definitely foods, um, that we miss. Uh, you know, like, like I was saying, I couldn't, I missed Mexican food for, for the longest That's time. American. That's Mexican. <laughs> But, but I was eating it in America. Right. <laughs> no, no, but I mean, uh, you know, um, you know, food places like uh, what we were missing, like Applebee's, um, you know, some, you know, some, some of those things that you're used to that. Um, now, now, let me tell you, there's a McDonald's and a KFC and a Burger King and a Domino's everywhere. Every country we've been in, we oh, always yeah. find those franchises. Oh, and a Subway. So, you know, there are there are things that are familiar that are around. But, yeah, I mean, things like Cheesecake Factory or Olive Garden, you know, things like that, that um, you kind of were your favorites um, back home that you kind of miss every now and then. And, again, when I go, you know, visit my parents, those are some of the first things. I'm like, oh, well, I what we do, I have little consoles, you know, something like that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And are you like me when I'm I'm going to different barbecue restaurants over here? I got to try their barbecue baked potatoes because I want to compare them. Do you do the same? Do you go into McDonald's just to compare the McDonald's and see what they have on the menu? Exactly. Yeah, because even though there is a McDonald's and a KFC and a Domino's in every country, um, they have their different cultural twists. The um, most interesting thing I've ever been into is the McDonald's in Beijing. Mm. I, I say nothing else because they would. <laughs> It was first of all trying to figure out what th this the menu said. <laughs> nope, nope, not happening. But we all took something that we had. Like I had, I'm allergic to fish, so I had to ensure that it wasn't a fish burger or right. something like that, right? But then we just pointed at something like that's what we're gonna try because we had no clue what we ordered because we didn't understand <laughs> the language. But we exactly. all tried, and it was good. Ah. Um, but yeah, we. Uh, one of them had literally a black burger. And, you know, we, we laugh here at the black burger. The bread was black. Uh, the meat was black. Everything was just black. Mm -hmm. Black black burger. He liked it, though. So, yeah. Oh, nice. So, <laughs> you do compare chains oh oh yeah definitely yeah definitely we definitely talk about um you know how the food um even though it's the same chain kind of has that their own cultural twist like um you know uh kfc in indonesia they uh didn't have like most of the sides that we really liked, like the coleslaw and the corn and the mac and cheese um their meals were like, you know, um two pieces of chicken which tasted the same um but then they would serve it with rice um, or potatoes or something like that. And then the McDonald's um, are always different. Like in India, they have a Maharaja burger. Um, and then they also don't serve beef um, in McDonald's in India. Um, and then in um, you know, Indonesia, they had their own um, Indonesian twist with McDonald's. Um, and they really loved adding, you know, having sweets uh, with everything. So they would always, um, like they really liked having fried, uh, fried uh, bananas. Um, mm -hmm. yeah. So they, they, that would always, yeah, that would always be part of the combo yeah. and stuff. Uh, but yeah, definitely, you know, looking at uh, Domino's is always different. Uh, they always make uh, in Indonesia the pizza crust are super thin um, for some reason, and then they have different toppings. Um, and yeah, in India they uh, have different toppings on their pizzas as well. So yeah, I mean, even though those chains exist all over the world, uh, they have their own cultural twist to them. So yeah, it's really interesting to, to see what that is. You know, we have uh, going back to McDonald's, um, growing up in Sweden, we have burgers that doesn't exist here on top of that. You know what they have at McDonald's in Sweden that is so darn delicious mm. Mm. donuts. Oh my gosh. Yeah. They actually they have Cinnamon okay. donuts and chocolate donuts. And there is nothing called like serving it in the morning. They serve it 7 yeah. 365. But those donuts are really, really good. That's what I would think. If I go back to home, I need to get a McDonald's donut. Exactly. Right. Yeah. Just, yeah. 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 I mean, yeah, that that alone is interesting. Just I mean, you could make a 
you know, uh, a whole agenda on going around the world and just comparing, you know, the franchises that exist around the world and just how different they are. Yeah. Yeah. So. So what food do you think, what have you eaten that's the most awkward around the world? Mm. Yeah. I mean, being in Asian countries, you, uh, you know, would eat a lot of food that, uh, you know, was like slimy for some reason. Or, you know, you know, like you weren't really sure what was in it. Um, also, you know, um, Asian places, Indonesia, India, they love having hot food. So everything is super spicy. And I can't eat, you know, um, spicy. So that that was always, I always had to tell them no spice. And then they would always get, like, panicked about that. Like, they, they had to put the spice into their food. But I'm like, no, 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 I don't want it. But, no, well, let me put a little bit of, no, 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 no. But yeah, they always get so panicked over that. But yeah, I mean, yeah, being yeah. in Asian country, you definitely sometimes you would order, and again, like you were saying, not knowing the language, you'd order something thinking it would be one thing, and then it comes, you know, um, not as expected, and you're kind of like, uh, okay, what am, what is this? <laughs> but again, it's part of the experience, you know. Yeah. I'm seeing seeing how you know different cultures, um, how their food is and stuff like that. But yeah, sometimes you do have that situation, and you're like, mm, I'm not so sure about this one. <laughs> <laughs> Reminds me of when we just came to Singapore and my mom, she was an explorer. She, like she explored everything w- when it came to food. And so we're at this uh, restaurant in downtown Singapore and she asked this, the serve, okay, what do you recommend on this dessert mm-hmm. box? Um, and he's like, I recommend that. Okay, I'll have one of those. And me being somewhere 11, 20 years old, I'll go with a scoop of vanilla ice cream. Right. <laughs> Let's be safe. I'm not the one to try new things. And it comes a mountain. And I mean a mountain. Like we're sitting at the table and I cannot see my mom anymore. (laughs) A mountain of ice. Oh, man. And I'm thinking, I was like, are you back there still, mom? And she is laughing because she literally (laughs) got a mountain of shaved ice. And she starts to dig into this. It's not even colored, but she can see there's something like in the middle of this thing. Corn. Oh. She got shaved ice and corn. (laughs) Never my vanilla ice cream tasted so good. (laughs) It was real like that was the best tea and that he liked. And we just we didn't understand. Right. <laughs> if anyone from Singapore can please explain to me what it was, I would greatly appreciate it. <laughs> to me, it was a mountain of shaved ice with a little bit of corn in the middle. Yeah. Yep. I still today, 20, 30 years later, I still bring that up over and over again. Because yeah, I you still remember that. <laughs> I'm still laughing at but my mom's facial expressions like what is this it's shaved eyes with what in the middle yeah she was pretty brave brave though to just ask yeah just give me whatever in a foreign country so yeah yeah. but you know she was an air stewardess so she flew around the world and tasted everything and had no allergies and no sense of fear when it came to food whatsoever i don't think there was anything she had not tasted Mm. whatsoever so yeah that's that's just how she she worked She loved it. I call it brave. Yeah, definitely. (laughs) Do you have any fun story to tell us before we end here of something that may have happened that you didn't expect? Now I'm taking you all off guard maybe because I didn't warn you about that question before. (laughs) Yeah. Oh gosh. So many things happen that I'm, that, you know, you don't expect, but you just, you're so used to it. You kind of go with the flow. I mean, I've had, you know, we've had customs issues, uh, Especially with my passport, <laughs> it seems it always that's always my passport that you know we always get stopped when we're trying to get on a plane and they're like you know they ask you a whole bunch of questions and things and when I you know when I was on the all the medication before I got off a majority of them they always were like well, what is this and then wanted me to open it and explain like you were saying explain what it's for what was on it you know what I'm gonna do with it. So, so yeah, I mean, you know, I mean, there's, there's always 
something unexpected that comes up. But I mean, again, we've just kind of grown to get used to it and you just kind of just go with the flow. Take it as it is and embrace exactly. it. Right? Exactly. exactly. Yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> Do you know where you're going next? You say you're going to be here in Mexico for approximately a year. Do you have a already now a vision of where the next stop may be? Yeah, no, I mean, I'll catch up with you in a year or two, so I can keep track of you. Yeah, I mean, my 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 things are either like I was saying Portugal or the Caribbean. I think will be next. Um, we'll have to see how things play out, and you know which which direction we head next to. But yeah, yeah, that's that's my feeling now. I mean, again, it might change. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, thank you so much, Angelie, for joining me today. It's been so I've learned so much about all these cultures and all around the world and inspirational, as you say, just don't make excuses. Just try. It, wherever you come from will always be there. You can always go back in one way. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Just think about worst case scenario, you know, and if that happens, you know, what's your plan? If you if you need to go back home, then hey, nothing wrong with that. At least just at least just stepped out and try. <laughs> right, right. At least you tried and, and you can take that to your to your book and it's like, well, I tried it. It didn't work out. But and you may come up with a solution that you didn't even think about from the get go. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think, you know, the biggest thing is that, um, you know, getting out of your comfort zone and whether that be, you know, moving to a different town in your state or moving to a different state in your country, you know, or moving to a different country entirely. I mean, that's really, again, you determine your own comfort zone. But yeah, I mean, I think, um, you know, we tend to get too comfortable. Um, and uh, that really hinders us from, you know, really experiencing life, experiencing this, you know, amazing world um, that we live on and, and really growing and developing into, you know, who I think, um, you know, we really are meant to be, um, you know, as, as, as humans, we're supposed to continue to constantly be growing and progressing. And um, for some reason, we think that once we're out of high school or college, that, that we, we should stop. And that's, you know, to me, that's not true. That's not how you live life. So yeah, I mean, just, you know, think about your life, and if you're happy living it. And if you're not, you know, um, what do you what do you Yeah, exactly? What do you what do you want to do and just go out there and do it? Absolutely. Thank you so, so much, Angelie. And for all of y'all, now you know, you have no excuses. Stop making them and just make up your mind. Where do you want to go? Go there. And if not, you can just look through all our other episodes, previous ones, and um, you figure it out so far. Thank you, Angelie. And for all Thank of y'all, see you in two weeks. Bye, everybody. <laughs>